Hi, this is Matt. This is uh, an accompanying video to a blog post I've previously written around Chrome Enterprise Management from the VMware Workspace ONE UEM console. Um, so I'll just tie back to a couple of things that I had mentioned in the blog post, but we'll, we'll look at real quick now. So first off, before any of the integration will work, you've got to make sure that within the uh, Chrome Management settings within the Google Admin console, you have third-party EMM management enabled. So before we go into Chrome Management, there's two places you've got to do it. First, user and browser settings. <clears throat> so if you scroll right to the very bottom, you'll see here Chrome Partner Access. So that's enabled. And if I just jump back one level, and then the second point or second area would be device settings. If you only do it in one of those places, uh, the management's not going to work correctly. And again, scroll right to the bottom. There you go. Make sure that's done. We will come back to the admin console. I've got a couple of bits that I want to show you in here. Um, actually, we'll leave it in the Chrome management section because that's where we'll be heading back to. If we go to the Workspace ONE console, uh, I've created a separate uh, organizational group purely for Chrome devices. So you can see that I've got three devices in there. If we look at some of the profiles, um, I've got a number of Chrome profiles that I've created. So if we go and look at, say, the app payload. So the way that the applications are delivered is a little bit different to other uh, ways you may have done it or seen it before with, with Workspace ONE. Um, which I'll cancel that for a second. Previously, if you've added an application, you would have done it through apps and books. So you'd have probably come here and gone into public and browsed the uh, Apple Store or, or the Google Play Store or even the Windows uh, Microsoft Store and added the applications there. For Chromebooks, it's a little different. So we go into those profiles again and I'll just re edit. So in here, we're all doing this via a profile. So one of the differences here is that we don't have a Chrome agent. So previously, if you've had experience, past experience with AirWatch, you'd have installed the AirWatch agent or then moved on to the Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub. And you would have that installed on your Android, iOS, uh, Mac OS, or Windows device. But with Chrome OS, we're just taking advantage of the Google APIs. Therefore, there's no agent, which is why things are a little bit different. If you come into the Apple Control tab here, I have a single payload, which is deploying my Chrome native apps, as well as my Android apps. I've configured my devices in such a way they can accept both. You require the app ID from Google for this to work. So if we look at these Android apps, you can see you've got app ID for the My VMware app, for the Horizon client, sorry, the Horizon client. It does actually say client, too much text. Workspace ONE and also Slack. So <clears throat> the other field then is whether you want to pin those to the app shelf. So do you want to have them along the bar or on the bottom on the Chrome device? So the best way to get the app ID is just through the Google Play Store. So for example, if I go into Slack, that was at the bottom. I'm going to Slack. <clears throat> you can see there that slack.com exists. So that's all you need, the, the piece after the equal sign. So I would copy and paste that as I did there, slack.com. If, for example, we do Horizon, and we go into the VMware Horizon client. Again, it's a bit longer, but you can still see it's com.vmware.viewclient.android. So again, that's what I'd pasted in there. With regards to the general settings, this is just an, uh, a name. So that's what I've given it. Obviously, the version is, is automated. That's going to increment every time I make changes in here. It's managed by this specific organizational group, and it's deploying to that group of users. So I've created a group of users called Chrome OS, and I assign my users to that group. If you belong to that group, you'll get these applications. So. Let's save and publish that. So applications are done as, as a user profile. So if we were to say add profile, 
just in case this is something you haven't seen before. We come in here, we select Chrome OS, you then get your two subsequent choices, device or user. For an example, if I go into a device profile, you will notice that there's no settings there that are relevant <clears throat> to application delivery and there's, there's no app settings. It's because that's a user profile piece. What we do have in the device is things like, um, you know, device settings, Wi-Fi settings, disabling guest mode, those sort of things. So if we look at another profile, this is one I've already created, which is just to disable guest mode. Okay, so again, sign to the same people. The tick next to it tells me that's the uh, payload that's been configured. And you can see here that strict sign is disabled, guest mode, sorry, guest mode is also disabled. Okay, I'm gonna cancel that because I've not actually made any changes. If I want to know who has received this payload, you can see here it's been installed on one user and it's assigned to one user. So if I went in there to see who it was assigned to, yep, you can see that's me. And equally, if I go into the installed section, again, you see the same person. So I know that I've received that. Um, we're gonna switch across to the Chrome device um, itself in a second. But one thing I wanted to show you is that if you've got an experience with Chrome Enterprise, typically the way to give an uh, Android application to your users would be to whitelist the application. So that's something that's done through the Google Admin Console. If we look at the app payload that we send, let's reiterate those apps. <clears throat> so that's uh, Slack, Workspace ONE, My VMware, and Horizon. If, uh, sorry, not that one, if I go to the Google Admin Console and we look at uh, sorry, apologies, I don't want to go into that section. Uh, let's go to app management. <clears throat> and if I look at my configured Android apps, okay, so these are the apps that I've whitelisted by the Google Admin Console. You will see, or not see more, that my VMware is not there, Slack is not there, uh, Horizon Client is because I whitelisted it here, but the main two that, you, that are missing are My VMware and Slack. And I mention that just because of some relevance I'm going to show you when we move across to that uh, Chrome OS. So if I just stop sharing for a second. And now we should be switching over to the Chrome display. Try and minimize that. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're looking at now is Chrome. Um, along the bottom, you'll see the editing tools. So that was part of my payload. So that was the native Chrome app. You also see Boxer. You can also see Zoom. If we go to the full app list, you'll see from here um, on the next page, we have Slack. And on the previous page, we also have the My VMware app. So these are apps that, that we pushed. So they're those Android apps. If I then open the Google Play Store, these are the apps that you saw whitelisted in the Google Admin Console. However, you can see that Slack is there, you can see that my VM was there. So really the purpose for me showing you that was just to show you that you don't need to whitelist applications in the Google Admin Console to make them available. So you don't need to duplicate work. I've done a bit of duplication, some of that was for testing, some of that was for recording other videos. But essentially the point being is the way that we do our app delivery, you don't need to whitelist it here. You can do it in the one place and that will then push that through. One thing that's quite useful is if you're ever looking to uh, maybe do some troubleshooting or see if uh, profiles are being delivered down, is to open the browser and oh, do Chrome, colon slash slash policy. That will show you the last time a policy 
both user and device was sent, you can force the reload of it. But then, you know, equally you can search. So if you wanted to see, uh, you know, it was device guest mode, we disabled that. So device guest mode enabled is false, which essentially means it's been disabled. So I know that that profile's worked. Obviously, the Workspace One Management Console tells, tells me it's been delivered and it worked. But if you ever wanted any verification and to double check, here's just a quick and simple way to do that. Um, <clears throat> in terms of integration and, and you know profile creation, those are the main sort of things I wanted to show you. You know, we've looked at uh, device profiles as well as user profiles, where we get the app ID from, how we can add them to the profile. Some of the stuff that I wasn't able to show around integration was what actually happens when you do the integration. Uh, in my blog article, I do refer to a video in YouTube that shows that. So, you know, that's the, the best source of reference for that. And really, it's pretty straightforward. Via the Chrome EMM configuration page in the Workspace ONE console, you basically uh, point it at your Google Admin console with the admin account, and it will then go through and request a verification code, which you then just paste back into our console. So very straightforward. Um, you know, it, it's, as I say, it, it's quite a, a, a minimal configuration to get it up and working. Um, and I just thought that this was a good way to help, you know, understand kind of what is and isn't possible in terms of the way we manage our profiles, the fact that there's no agent there, therefore some of the features and functions you may be used to that you've been able to do to Android devices or iOS devices, or Windows devices, aren't necessarily gonna be applicable to Chrome just because of the fact there's no agent there. The functionality and the, the management we have of Chrome, you know, is evolving, it changes with, uh, you know, new releases of Workspace ONE UEM, but also releases of Chrome Enterprise you know, additional APIs become available and we're able to work with those. So, um, you know, thank you very much for your time and I hope you found this useful.